Salams, welcome to another episode of Playthings of Alien Forces. With me in the studio, as always, is Leslie Xavier. I'm Siddhant Ani, and today we're talking about three fairly important stories. First up, of course, is the sacking of India's ODI skipper Virat Kohli. Uh, then we're talking about the BCCI's latest balance sheet and how the profits of the world's richest cricket board are on the up despite the COVID-19 pandemic. And finally, the latest of all these stories, yesterday's dramatic finale to the F1 season. Uh, Lewis Hamilton there losing out to Max Verstappen in terms of the driver's title. Leslie, jumping straight into the first story, man, keeping the energy high this uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, what is the logic behind removing Virat Kohli, the, I suppose, poster boy for Indian cricket for the past 10 years or so, as captain of the ODI team, the one-day international team? We should understand first that uh, poster boys needn't be leaders. So, <laughs> it starts from there. So, yeah, Virat Kohli had a decent run as the test captain. Uh, possibly aided by the fact that we had a very long home season. Mm. And uh, beyond that, if you look at it, his stint as the limited overs captain, both T20I and uh, uh, ODIs, he has had no major success in the ICC tournaments. Mm. And that's key because when we look at it now, uh, the, the earlier it was important, the performances in the bilateral series, because it, it had some uh, level of, uh, I mean, gravitas in a way because uh, the rivalries mm. and uh, many other things at stake. But now with the ICC pushing in their global events, Every second year, you have the D20 World almost Cup. Almost every year, it seems yeah, like almost every World year, Cup it's happened. there. It's there, and then the one day, one day World Cup, and then on the other side of the spectrum, the World Test Championship is mm. also happening. Mm. So ICCI, as more or less, I mean, not same as FIFA because FIFA goes by one major tournament. This mm. has they have five, multiple. I mean, multiple three flagship tournaments, and they are keen on pushing that. So what is happening off late is that all the bilateral series that happens are basically planned uh, base, uh, to act as warm up towards the major event. So the last season, if you look at it, most of the series that India played were uh, test series they played, and beyond that, after the IPL, it was all T20 matches. Mm. And so that's that's uh, one reason why there were a lot of critics and Virat Kohli fans who were coming out and saying that why remove him now as the ODI skipper because he didn't captain the I mean he didn't play an ODI mm. lead 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 an ODI side since since March mm. when it's been quite a long time mm. and uh, uh, but but the but the point given is that we have to look backwards and look at a little forward also mm. as to why why this decision is important now and. Again, uh, Rohit Sharma is the same age as Virat Kohli. So, are we looking at the future mm. that way? That's also a question. But mm. who's 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 a leader that's capable of doing it? So, board has a lot of dilemma at hand, and that dilemma has come because of the Virat Shastri era. Mm. And so, when we talk about Kohli's captaincy and all that, whatever the fault that may lie, because it's it's very evident that even leading a star-studded side like uh, the Bengaluru side, Royal Ch Challengers Bangalore in, in the, the IPL, IPL right. he has had no success. Mm. And uh, leading the Indian side, he has had limited success. He has always failed in crunch matches. Mm. And uh, so, it, so, we can easily question Kohli's credentials or his style of captaining. Mm. Because uh, uh, the hyper-aggressive style, maybe it's not suitable for a lot of uh, uh, players in the mix and it works for Virat individually as a batter but it's not probably working working for the team and uh, if you look at the style of the previous captain which uh, Virat Kohli replaced mm. who re Virat Kohli replaced mm. it, we can understand that uh, I mean he is the most successful Indian captain ever MS Dhoni and yeah. so we can understand that difference so but I'm not getting into that but I'm getting into the part where Virat Shastri era what legacy did they leave they didn't plan their the structure of the team or the players inclusion or the team composition or uh, uh, mingling in of uh, mixing in of youngsters blending in of youngsters into the mix quite seriously at all it seems that they went by uh, 
retaining players and promoting players who happen to be right a, a sort of sense of maintaining the status quo mm -hmm. keeping things as they are a general sense of yeah. well-being in any case surrounds the indian yeah, yeah. cricket fraternity yeah, yeah. Yeah. so usi mein aap chalte rahe usi mein chalte raho and also there was this uh, i mean for instance uh, kuldeep yadav uh, he suddenly came into prominence he was doing well in the ipl he had some great match winning knocks as well as and uh, also with the ball mm. and suddenly he went off the radar and uh, sources and uh, uh, i was talking to uh, one of them yesterday a senior journalist who is privy of this apparently it was a fallout with uh, virat kohli for some uh, some inter internal dynamics that's happening and that happened and kohli ensured that he is not in the mix i mean this is for me this is a say mm. i'm not saying it as a fact but mm. uh these things happen within the team we, historically when we look at when we look at indian cricket history captains and their players and their senior team and all that all these games have happened so it it is a possibility that this has happened for, for almost 5 years uh, ravichandran ashwin india's premier off spinner he was mm. not there in the t20 side and he's a great t20 bowler mm. and when he was given a chance at the world cup recently he he played extremely well so mm. so and he is he is a senior player so when we look at the mix of players that are there currently there is not even one barring rohit sharma who can be a good leader mm. so uh, so when we say uh, why rohit sharma then because he is also old this is the point that virat, virat kohli didn't do what he was supposed to do on the side the mm. other other big responsibility that he had mm. which is to hand over the baton to the next side and ensure that that next person is there in line continuity and so that's not there no no uh, player has uh, has emerged who is a leader so this happens in politics also when in a state uh, for instance i'll give you a direct example from chennai uh, after jayalalitha second in line nobody so mm. the, splintering things like that are happening so uh, there is a void mm. and kohli being kohli larger than life he mm. has created a void and it's 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 now so dravid coming in the first steps that has been taken and it's it's good to see that they are looking at the team rather than rather than a personality and they are they are ensuring that the void is filled so that mm. uh, teams momentum teams stature in the hierarchy of the world cricket remains mm. intact mm. so so it's i i completely agree with the decision hmm. and uh, whatever the of course the means by which it was uh, uh, executed Done. there there is a game behind that yeah. also again it's interesting because again it's some it's to show that uh, who is the bosses who the bosses hmm. because there was a feeling that kohli announced himself excused himself from the captaincy of t20 rather than bcci and the selection committee deciding, deciding it for that some other captain mm. so captain i am i am kohli and i will select myself or deselect myself mm. <laughs> that is that's not probably done mm. and bcci is, is also setting the protocol right okay fair enough we'll of course keep be keeping a close eye on the new era because like like we were saying last time uh at least whatever these changes are change is also important and 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 it brings a new sort of impetus and a new angle or new angle of approach at least towards looking at how what is happening with indian cricket so we'll be following that closely but we we're sticking with the sport though yeah. indian cricket because news click gained exclusive access to the bcci's balance sheet for the financial year 2020 2021 uh this was uh, of course uh, accessed by our veteran cricket reporter Kazir Mohammad Ali who published a story on the website you can check that story out on newsclick.in uh essentially there are a lot of figures in the story because of course it, we are looking at the balance sheet uh, so there's no getting around that part but essentially the bcci has made a uh, overall revenue <laughs> of <laughs> over 18000 crore rupees net, net worth has increased right. so net sorry the bcci's balance sheet net worth has increased to over 18000 crore rupees as per the latest a uh, balance sheet which is up quite significantly despite the fact that most domestic events tournaments uh, almost all of women's cricket was cancelled has not happened uh, in india for close to 2 years yeah. uh, because of the covid-19 pandemic um lesley key findings from this balance sheet uh, examination uh, it's not that profits have gone up mm -hmm. 
or it's not that revenue has gone up yeah. revenue has fallen but profits have increased because it seems the bcci has spent mm -hmm. a lot less I, i not even 50% yeah. of what it has spent in previous years on cricketing activities and which includes sort of payments to its affiliate boards mm -hmm. uh, in the state boards hosting tournaments of course and all of these things uh, would you imagine firstly that uh, during the time of a pandemic your expenses should go up because you are trying to use all this wealth that you have accumulated to look after the fraternity from which or based on whose work all of this is created initial months of the pandemic there were stories coming out of how many states have not played their ng players contracted players also there was a delay of, of uh, for money coming in mm. and later it was cited that it's because i mean i mean the administrative problems that covid-19 lockdowns created and mm. it has created right so uh, slowly the clearing and all happened but at the same time restarting of tournaments have been on the ice uh, the main domestic tournaments mm. of course they conducted the said mustakali tournament mm. t20 before the i mean uh, last month yeah, before and the new zealand series. yeah before the new zealand series and uh, uh, also uh, they are planning the ranji season next year and uh, uh but the women's cricket scene is not been sorted out yet mm. and also there are many state level uh, lower level tournaments that's not been uh, i mean uh, a restart of those have not been planned mm. so bcci's priority is what we have to question here firstly to start with because it's it's on paper a non profit organization so if profits are increasing they should devise ways to at least at least to maintain that image because it's important now because a lot of things are happening in courts and income tax tribunals where uh, the authorities have started questioning whether whether board is really a non profit organization meant mm. to promote cricket mm. which uh, means that a certain amount of their revenues need to be or their profits need to be plowed back into the into sport into the sport into the system and uh, we are talking about right from grassroots so uh if at all uh, but but it's uh, we were going back to the story of kaiser and kaiser's previous prior, the story prior to this was on bcci's uh, budgetary allocation for legal cases mm, mm. so that's more than 800 crore mm. it's not something that's pumping in back into the game for promotion mm. of the game right mm. is to fight cases of western interest mm. most of the cases mm. i mean they have lawyers uh, appealing to supreme court to <laughs> go back to the old ways and mm. revoke whatever lodha panel recommendations that has been impl implemented yeah. so that yeah. is one case so yeah. yeah a lot of money is pumped into that mm. and uh, so uh, so bcci on one hand is doing that and on the other hand they are fighting a case saying that we need uh, ex uh, tax exemption for ipl revenue mm. uh, and the income tax tribunal agreed to that saying mm. that it's been used for uh, promoting the sport promoting the sport but ipl's expense this year for staging itself was uh, drastically down because uh, it's been staged in the UAE. UAE previous season also in the UAE mm -hmm. I mean the second half of this year season in the yeah. UAE yeah. and so venues are less only three venues in the UAE so mm -hmm. expenses come down because travel if you are staging it in India of course air travel yeah. uh, other logistics all these things come into play but there it's all set three stadiums mm -hmm. two centralized uh, hotels, hotels and yeah. that's 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 it mm -hmm. so they managed uh, quite a bit of profit from there mm. uh, simply because expenses was not but now that this is come out by us mm. that it's there uh, there is a substantial profit there let's see how the board is going to plan this pursuing this this amount uh, whether it would give a larger share to to the state units for them to implement whatever programs that they need mm. because we have seen this in various other sport as well including football where covid-19 has completely disrupt disrupted the supply chain all together and so uh, again going back to the same kohli story that we discussed a little while back it's about the future now mm. uh, if if the current players are not getting paid and also there are no funding to fuel age group cricket then 
where will the players come for for someone like a Dravid to have a larger pool to uh, work with. Uh, so uh, uh, these questions, so the, my first impression or my first reaction when such stories come out is that uh, why is it that the, the books are in a better shape as far as the sport uh, sport is concerned. The book should reflect sport and where it's heading. Yeah. It doesn't. There is <clears throat> there is a clear disconnect, and that disconnect is because the leadership has different idea of how to run the sport. And mm. it's uh, I, my I would I would implore now to the former skipper who is the head of BCCA, and uh, that uh, uh, he should look at not running the board like a company, like a limited company. Mm. It's not. You're not you're not trying to, uh, or, or nor should they run it like a like a club. Mm. So I don't know the philosophical uh, problem. It's a, if it's a philosophical problem or if it's clearly lack of uh, commitment to the game. So that's yeah. questionable. My first reaction when I saw the story was, "What are these numbers, boss?" We just don't <laughs> understand this, now Because eighteen thousand. So yeah, yeah, we understand eighteen thousand. So yeah. uh, and the rest of it, it's like the a rest blur. Of it is just whatever. <laughs> yeah. it is. All right. Uh, and finally, we're taking Leslie back to his motorsport roots today. After uh, <laughs> quite a quite a gap, I think. Uh, at least I don't know if we brought up any motorsport on playthings before. Playthings, but not. there's always a first time. Um, a dramatic end to the F1 season in uh, Abu Dhabi, was it? Mm. Yesterday? Yeah. Uh, what happened and uh, yeah, why, why is half the sport watching audience a little bit pissed off that Lewis Hamilton didn't end up with the Drivers' Championship? I think Formula 1 would be very happy with this, I don't know what happened because it's keeping the conversation alive and that's what they wanted because boring season, boring season is always criticised. Mm. We have seen quite a lot of, uh, so uh, you mentioned my formula, I mean, motorsport covering day. So, uh, one one reason why I am not very keenly following a season, unless something major like this happened, is is because uh, F1 has lost that edge as far as sporting competition is concerned. It's mm. always, there is always a monopoly mm. and monopoly belongs to the larger well-funded teams. Right. And it's all about money in that game, so mm. in that sport. So uh, in that on that regard, uh, on the on the track, we were seeing two drivers, Verstappen and uh, Hamilton, Hamilton, and they were representing big teams, Red Bull and uh, Mercedes. Just that Hamilton and the season was running quite tight, and it's it's it it almost felt like it's been staged like a WWE match because uh, Lewis Hamilton getting penalties and losing points and then coming back with a surge and then the final race of the season you have these two drivers on equal points and mm. what will happen, what mm. will happen next mm. and all these things and then it went into race day. And I feel for Hamilton because he had a beautiful race. He, he started behind Verstappen and drove well to take the lead. He was hindered by Verstappen's uh, uh, teammate Sergio Perez, uh, uh, who slowed it down so that so that Verstappen can catch catch, catch up. up with him. Mm. And uh, but the still Hamilton held the lead, and I don't know how this happened. An accident happened, and uh, Latifi he had a crash, and uh, four laps from race finish and Hamilton's eighth title. That's very significant. A black driver. We don't see black drivers in. In F1, F1, F1 yeah. we rarely see black drivers in motorsport yeah. also. So that's a different discussion that we can have at some point. Mm -hmm. Why, why this? I mean, very big gap, clear, clear, yeah, clear gap. Clear yeah. gap in, uh, but yeah. So eighth title that means he would have over over took uh, Schumacher's Schumacher. record, Michael mm -hmm. Schumacher's record. Uh, they brought in the safety car. Verstappen came close, and uh, and the last lap they removed the safety car. Mm. Which I mean, shouldn't have happened. They should have ended the race in uh, race in safety car because it's so unfair. Because on Hamilton, the lead that is created was lost because the safety car came came in. Of course, the stewards, the FIA stewards, stood uh, appeal was appeal was give. I mean, done by Mercedes and uh, the stewards took. Uh, I mean, stood by their decision, uh, noting down. I mean, saying all those sub. 
clauses in their rule books saying right. that this is correct, this is correct and mm. all that. Mm. But sporting sense wise, uh, general, I mean, justice wise, mm. it was a race that needed to have been ended behind safety car and that has happened previously. Right. They didn't want to, maybe it's, if it was a management decision that yeah, let's let's end this competitive season on, on, a, on a dramatic, dramatic uh, let's, let's race and finish the dramatic season. Mm. Maybe that's the decision. Mm. Maybe they thought that it's unfair on West Open that this happens because, I mean, you have two sets of fans also, right? Sure. So, sure. So if he had if it had finished in uh, behind safety car, then West Open didn't have the chance to, chance to push. Oh, it is, yeah. And so criticizing FIA and the Formula One organization would be, I mean, in that sense, it comes with its baggage. Mm -hmm. You can't clearly say. But as far as I am concerned, I'm a neutral, not an Hamilton fan, but I respect the man. I've I've had interaction with him. I've interviewed him, and he's quite a sweet chap also. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yes, uh, let's just see that. Uh, let's let's also know. And it's easy to brush his success by saying that he was, I mean, in a great team. He happened to be in a great team. But he, to be there, imagine the odds. No black driver around. Mm. So to be there, whatever whatever it took. So I respect the man. And to be there in that final lap, leading and just two minutes away from his record title, that also is 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 something. Mm. And. And considering all that factors, I I I think I mean I I would say that title was robbed from him. Mm. And beyond that, Hamilton in the sport within the sport drivers and everybody is fine. I guess they, Hamilton went and congratulated Verstappen. They are fine, and uh, Verstappen happens to be a very promising talent. Mm. We can see an era. We can see next season. Obviously, there will be fighting. I'm, I'm thinking in Tom. Uh, that's the that's the beauty again. So a Formula One wins with this, mm. not just with with the continuing conversation, but it's like a Ali versus Fraser yeah. now, yeah. in that sense that or or in motorsport yeah. terms, Senna versus Senna Prost. Versus Prost. Yeah. So that bad blood is there, and I, I, I of course, if it was 80s, then probably Senna would have. I mean, so Hamilton would have gone and punched <laughs> Verstappen. But yeah, now I guess uh, the drivers are more. Politically correct because uh, TV endorsements, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these things all happen, things. so they have to always be politically correct. Yeah, so uh, again, I still knowing motorsport, I still doubt whether it's artificially created, so mm. or whether it could have been avoided. It's, mm. it's mm. the sport has ceased to be this dramatic. Mm. That's one of the reasons why I stopped Question. watching it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, so, fair, fair. Yeah. But eventually, it comes back to the point that uh, you know. We are all playthings of aliens. Yeah, houses. there is, there are, there are forces that control, <laughs> control you. Which, yeah. All right. So from Leslie and me, that that's a wrap for today. Uh, you can get more on all of these stories and the rest of the work that NewsClick does uh, on the sports desk and otherwise from our website newsclick.in. We're also on social media platforms, so pick and choose what you like. Uh, we'll be back again next Monday with I think what might be our final show of the year before we take a short break uh, for the end of the year. Uh, but until then, stay safe. Thank you for watching. Uh, let us know if you, actually, this is a suggestion that someone had made that we should go the talk show route and get a little band playing. <laughs> let us know if that's something that might be of interest to you. Maybe a producer can bring <laughs> his band friends. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, until then, we'll, we'll be back next week. So, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Goodbye.